What's up guys? It's me, Sir Ernest, and today we're going to solve example 2.5 of Thornton and Marion, 5th edition. The problem reads, Find the displacement and velocity of a particle undergoing vertical motion in a medium having a retarding force proportional to the velocity. So here, just unlike example 2.3, here the object is now moving along the vertical. So let's say that vertical is along the z direction. So that means that the ground, or we can set a force, or the we can set the reference position to be at z equal to zero. Okay. Now, if we're going to consider a particle under the influence of a constant gravitational field, this object will experience two forces. Of course, we now experience your gravitational force that is always downward and if this object is moving downward so that means the velocity of this object is downward the retarding force will be in this direction okay if we set initially the object's height is h so therefore we can now solve this problem by identifying these two forces so we know that gravitational force is always downward so this is negative mg k hat and your resistive force fr will always be negative of the velocity vector so in this case, the velocity vector is along the negative uh, downward. So that means this becomes negative uh, kmv uh, k hat. So you might ask, why is it negative k hat, but the partic the force is upward? So this negative sign here tells you the direction of your velocity. Okay, so if you want to make sure about this, let's just put in V hat. Okay, so again the negative sign here indicates that the position, the, this FR is opposing the direction of your velocity. So the equation of motion now becomes negative mg minus kmv equals m derivative of v with respect to time. You can remember that this is ma. So again, negative sign in the kmv indicates that the, uh, this force is negative the direction of your velocity. So therefore, you can cancel m. We can simplify this. This becomes negative g plus kv equals uh, derivative of v with respect to time okay we can rearrange this to solve this differential equation we now have integral of dv over g plus kv and this equal to negative integral of dt if at time equal to zero the velocity is v naught then at time letter t the velocity is t and then we can solve this and we'll end up with the, uh, an expression of uh, ln or natural logarithm of g plus kv divided by g plus kv naught equals negative kt. Okay, so uh, solving for v, we now have v, you can just do the algebra later. The point is that calculate V, this is now equal to G over K plus G plus K V naught over K times E to the negative KT. So this is now your velocity function, which is the derivative of Z with respect to time. Now, 
again doing the integration again now have integral of dz is equal to integral of negative g over k plus g plus k v naught over k e to the negative k t dt again using the initial condition at time equal to zero the position of the particle is at h and at a later time t the velocity uh, the position of your object is at z at a later time t so this is v naught okay so this will be c so integrating this whole thing we now end up with this expression z as a function of time will be equal to h minus g over kt plus g plus kv naught over k squared times 1 minus e to the negative kt. This will be your position function. Okay? Now, uh, let's analyze the motion further. So if you're going to notice for the velocity as time approaches infinity so you notice that this this term will approach zero so this indicates that there is a limiting value of v and that limiting value okay so that oh, sorry so this v would approach a limiting value equal to negative g k or gk so the negative sign here indicates the direction but the point here is that okay we call this limiting value the terminal velocity okay so if we're going to graph that so this is your let's say time and this is your speed remember this is speed okay the speed of the terminal velocity would be equal to g over k okay so again we're talking about speeds here so g over k is somewhere here let's say so this will be your limiting value if the magnitude of the initial velocity is greater than the terminal velocity let's call this vt okay the graph look like this remember this is your magnitude of pt could look something like this so that means it will uh, immediately be it, it will immediately begin to slow down exponentially and v would approach a terminal speed from the opposite direction on the other hand if for example if v not is less than v t so that means initially the velocity the object is moving slow enough okay or slower than the terminal velocity so in this case the initial velocity will be below this line and then it will eventually increase and then it will approach the uh, initial or the terminal velocity okay and then if it starts from rest will look like this okay so this is your this is how the velocity the speed changes with time so again if the velocity initial velocity is greater than the terminal velocity the velocity will immediately slow down exponentially On the other hand if the velocity initial velocity is less than the terminal velocity it will speed up but again it will reach a limiting value called the terminal velocity Okay, so that's it. That's your solution to problem 2.5 of Thornton and Marion. Thank you guys for watching. I hope you learned something today. And I will see you guys in the next video. Bye-bye.